I'm a huge Buckeye fan. If you have a nice jersey, I can help you recruit. Please get these ladies paid. We're going to do what we want. And you're going to have no choice but to respect it. So basically, the NCAA was saying you can't benefit off of your athletic reputation, but we can. It's five seconds on the clock. Are you going to fold under the pressure or are you going to rise to the occasion and make a name for yourself? Welcome back to the five seconds on the clock podcast. I am your host, Brandon Williams. This is episode nine of the podcast. Technically, it's episode 11 if you count the intro and episode 8.5 I did a few weeks ago. But officially, this is episode nine. And today I want to talk about competitive sports. I just have one question. Are competitive sports losing its competitive edge? So basically, I'm asking, is the sports landscape as competitive as it used to be? So let me tell you what sparked this conversation, this topic, this idea. Um, So I work at a local radio station here in Dayton, Ohio. It's called ESPN 1410 Wing AM. It's a local ESPN station in Dayton, Ohio. And so one day we were on the air and the host started to talk about this tweet from Joe Mixon. And he said he was kind of being like a, a fanboy. I just want to read the tweet directly f- for you guys. It says, bruh. I still can't believe I shook at Tom Brady's hand today and had a little conversation with him. I ain't going to lie. I wanted to ask for his jersey, but was too scared to ask. And then Tom Brady quoted the tweet and said, great game, Joe. I'll send a jersey your way. And then Joe Mixon said, oh, man, I'm lost for words. Appreciate you with the gold emoji and hashtag Bay legend. And so then on the radio station, they were just saying how he was being like a fanboy and and they were talking about how players always swap jerseys now, and that's kind of like it's soft. It's something that wouldn't be done before. And then that just sparked something in my mind. I'm like, let me talk about this. Let me talk about the sports landscape in general, not just football. But, you know, I will focus on football because that's what sparked the conversation. Um, and one thing they started to talk about was jersey swaps. And so I just, you know, got to thinking about jersey swaps and was really trying to form my opinion on it. Of course, I grew up in an area. Well, I didn't necessarily grow up in the era. It really just started where the, these players swap jerseys in the NBA, NFL, and stuff like that. But I would say because I'm a part of this, the generation, especially the players that are coming in the league now, they're either younger than me or my age. And so I can kind of connect with them more. I'm part of their, that generation. And so I really haven't thought so much about the jersey swaps. But let me tell you my true and honest opinions about it. One, jerseys are more readily available than they were before. I'm sure teams probably players only got a certain amount of jerseys and you don't have to make sure that they were washed and ready for the next game and stuff like that. But nowadays it's mass production. You can just print it, put it on the back, put a number and a name on the back of the jersey. It's done. Boom. Send it out. And that's led to some players swapping multiple jerseys after a game. I saw Lamar Jackson do it earlier this season. And then I think I read something on Twitter where um, a couple of his former Louisville t- teammates or guys who are alums of Louisville, which is where Lamar went, of course, they wanted um, his jersey after the game. So he went ahead, let the team know that ahead of time to get more than one jersey. I think he might have even had like three out there that day. I think that's what I saw. And also, I think it's cool to have these jerseys of guys you competed with or against. And it'll definitely be something to remind you of your career and who you played against long after football. So I think the jersey swap idea is genius. Yeah, sure, you could do it after the game maybe where cameras wouldn't see it or you could do it where you just send it to them and it's not like a spectacle so it's like oh after the game they're buddy buddy that doesn't mean they weren't competitors on the field that doesn't mean that their mindset was any different they're like oh I'm not going to go as hard because my buddy or somebody I'm cool with is on the other sideline I'm not going to go as hard that's not their mindset I mean of course I'm not in their head so I wouldn't know but come on these guys get paid to perform and this is something they've been doing for most of their lives. You think just because they're swapping jerseys, that doesn't mean they're being as competitive. I'm not I'm not one who's I'm not one who sides with that that idea. It just doesn't make sense to me. And plus it's a new era. The game is different than it was 20, 30, 50 years ago. A lot of these guys that are coming into the league now, with any league, any sport, basketball, football, whatever, a lot of guys play with or against each other 
at camps in the summer, high school All-American games, college All-American games, or they went to prep prep schools and played with or against this other elite ta- talent. We know what the AAU circuit is like nowadays, so these guys are all friends because they played with or against each other, or they're playing in some type of tournament, um, whether it's college. We have Maui tournaments, these tournaments they're doing in las vegas all these early season tournaments they're trying to do around college basketball to get the excitement up while the college football season is still ending so it's just a new era these guys know each other i know a lot of guys are real good friends you see them talking to each other on social media you see them in photos together after before games or if they're just out somewhere at the same time but when they get on that court they're dogs they want to kill each other they're going at it it doesn't make these guys less competitive just because they're friends Honestly, this has been going on for years. Even guys who were big-time rivals, Magic and Bird, they loved each other. They had commercials off the court. And, yeah, we didn't see as much as their interaction because social media wasn't as prevalent. Now we're in the middle of the social media era. I think social media could change the way we live as people in general. It's just a different time. And plus, these guys are more than just athletes. And that's always been the case, but a lot of guys have just a different platform. Like I said, social media has changed a lot about the way we live. But these athletes are entrepreneurs. They're investors. And they're basically their own personal brands. You can use stuff like social media or other stuff you do in the community to build up your own personal brand. Yeah, of course, we want that guy who loves the game. They bleed the game. All they think about, they wake up and go to sleep thinking about the game. That's the kind of guy we want. A guy, the kind of guy who, who's a killer when he's on the field, on the court, the ice, etc. And you can still be that and still live your regular life. They're more than athletes. I think that's something people need to understand. These are guys they looked up to and watched for years. And sometimes I still marvel at the fact that I'm older than some of these professional athletes. It just doesn't make sense to me, especially because I've been watching sports for years and just, you know, being a younger guy and then growing up. And then watching the game, you're like, man, he's 22, 21, 20, 19. Like, dang, and I'm 23. It's, it's just crazy to see where you can be at at different points in your life just based off of the things that you're blessed with. I mean, that's great for those guys. I love that they can be 19, 20, 21, 22 years old and change their family's trajectory and the way their family lives. But regardless, what I was trying to get at when I was saying that, I'm saying since I've been watching these players that are in the league for years, what do you think they've been doing? They've been doing the same thing. They're students of the game. They're trying to get to the level of these players that they've been watching for years. So you see, so you think when they don't see them, they're not like a bit like, whoa, a little shock. You can be starstruck. I mean, but don't let that affect how you play. But when you first see that person after the game, you can have that moment. You can have that moment. On the field, on the court, on the diamond, the ice, etc. you are competitors. But after the game, a little fandom, a little fanboy might come out of you. And I think that's okay because you're also thanking them, letting them know what they did for the game and how they inspired you. So it's fine. After the game, during the game, before the game, no, can't do none of that because you're a professional. You have to come do your job. You have to be ready to play and compete. But after the game, that's fine. Come on. We are all human. I feel like if you've been watching somebody for years, And then you get to a point in your life where you've done things, you progressed, and you finally get to see that person. like, And you get to see them in action. You get to see them perform. You don't just meet them, but you're playing against them. You're on the other sideline, potentially on the field at the same time as that person. You can't get a little inspired, a little, you know, like, wow, a little shock. That's going to happen. And we got to stop living in the past, people. Last generation of athletes were great. But that doesn't mean as fans we can't embrace the new players and style of play of today's generation. I'm sure generations before them did something different than the players before them or play under new rules that weren't there before. And people had something to say. But guess what? The world goes on, people. And as the world changes around us, so will sports. Let me explain. Society has changed as a whole and sports has changed with it. And a lot of guys are calling the rules of the players nowadays soft. They're not soft. It's just a different time in sports. Think about it. Nowadays, we are way more aware of player safety. Let me talk about football specifically. It is a very dangerous and vicious sport. It can be. It's a beautiful sport, but it can be dangerous as well. 
I mean, you have guys running at you full speed as fast as they can in pads with helmets on trying to hit you as hard as they can, trying to make a hit that has the biggest possible impact it can to either just make a statement or to get the ball loose. It's a part of the game, but it is dangerous. Look at the emphasis the NFL has on player safety, especially to the head and neck area. In the NFL, you can't hit a defenseless player if he doesn't have time to catch the ball and react and see that you're coming so you can either try and make a move or get down, you will get flagged. They want guys. Now, it's different if you're a runner because you're a runner. You have intentions on going up the field. You not, you're not going to pass the ball. You didn't just catch it and don't have time to react. You're running the ball. Plus, pay attention to the focus the NFL has on CTE and brain research. The NFL is, in this I would say, the past decade. I'll just give them that. The past decade, the, all the research and stuff they've done, in connection with CTE CTE, and brain damage that's caused by the game of football. I really give the NFL credit for that. And that's why these new rules have been implemented. And I know as fans, we look at it from the viewpoint of the defender. We're like, man, what can they do? I mean, they can't tackle anymore. There's no right technique, but it is. And as you see, guys have figured that out. That's just a part of the game. As the rules change, the style of play has to change as well. And while we don't always like that in terms of what we're used to seeing, that's what's best for the longevity of the players. That's what's best for the longevity and the brand of the league. So that's something that's real nice to see that the NFL is caring more about its players. Nowadays, analytics are a big part of sports. It's all about the numbers game. Does this make sense? What does this lead to? This is the cause and this will be the effect. You see it in baseball. Pitchers normally or traditionally as we think of them, they go at least seven innings, you know, maybe a complete game just on how they're feeling, what their pinch ca- pitch count is. But analytics is like, no, listen, a pitcher, he's going to probably throw, a starting pitcher would go, like I said, seven to nine innings. And you're throwing the ball 90 to 100 times at 90 to 100 miles per hour. You're throwing the ball 90 times, 90 to 100 miles per hour. You're doing this every five days. That's not, the human body isn't supposed to do that. Yeah, these guys are supreme athletes. They work for this. They train for this. But still, that's not normal for the human body. What athletes in the NFL take, all the punishment they take, that's not normal for the human body. And the NBA playing back-to-back-to-back games, three days, no rest, that ain't normal for the human body. But you see these guys are athletes. But now we're using these analytics and these numbers to help these guys because, listen, the competitive spirit they have, they want to go out there as many times as they can, as many times a year to compete because they want to chase that ultimate goal of getting better and winning a championship. And some just play for the love of the game. Still competitors. I'm telling y'all. I got one more point. One more point I want to make. Most of the young men entering the professional sports landscape or even the vets that are still there, a lot of them grew up in the social media era. Social media can help or harm you as an athlete. What do I mean by that? Of course we see the way it can help. You see all the things you can do in the community, the different ways you can give back. You can have your own brand, um, your own platform. That's the word I was looking for. Now players have their own platform. They can control their own narrative. Guys like LeBron and KD have their own um, production companies. They're doing big things. Like I said, they're more than just athletes, investors entrepreneurs and just how you can use social media to your advantage it could also lead to your demise just look at ab i really want ab to get some help man because i feel like he could still do so much on the field even in one game he played this year with the patriots he had a touchdown i think he had four receptions like 56 yards in the touchdown he still had a touchdown in that game he can be productive he just has to get right with himself first that's how i feel i just want i'm just praying for him i want him to get right with himself he doesn't have to prove anybody, anything to anybody. He just has to be the best Antonio Brown that he can be. All that other, you know, stuff, the theatrics, the show. Don't worry about that. Just be you, man. Be the best you you can be. Improve yourself right. And in the process, you'll prove others wrong. That's all it is, man. I want you to get better, man. If you ever have the opportunity, I would be, I'd be blessed if you heard this. That would mean some great things for the podcast. But... If you hear this, A.B., bro, just get right. Don't think about nobody else. You got to be selfish from a standpoint of it's about A.B. What do I need to do to get back to where I want to be to get back on track? Not the kind of selfish work and kind of get you in trouble. 
you done lost out on some money because you've been selfish. But be selfish to the point where you like, this is where I am. This is where I want to be. This is what I have to do to get there. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me. No matter what people need, what people want during the process, it's not going to stop me from getting what I want. It's not going to stop me from reaching my goals. I just wanted to say that. I had to say that last piece. So to sum things up, competitive sports are still very competitive. Times have changed. Society has changed. Rules have changed. And as things change, so does the product on the field, court, or wherever your sport is played. But that's all for episode nine. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, share, and please, please provide any feedback. More to come this week. You heard that right this week. I got more content, another episode coming for y'all. But signing off for the five seconds on the clock podcast, it's your boy, Brandon Williams. Yeah, dick.